Right, I'm just doing this small piece for demonstration purposes for the plinth section. Um, I've already checked it for square. I've cut it down to length because it was longer than I wanted. All right, and I've checked the bed. I'll just turn it round towards the camera so that I don't know if Emily can actually see that, but the bed's running through that way. All right. So that's going to be the bottom. That's going to be the top. All right. So it's in its natural bed. All right. I've already marked a section on the other end. I'm going to mark a section on this end. If you can remember from your tools lesson, what's that called? Mark and drag. Well done. Or a cock's coat. Right. This one particularly is shaped a bit like a cock's coat. Right. So I'm marking the section on. I've lined it up with the bottom bed and the face. I'm marking it in quite firmly so that when I've uh, finished marking it on, the line will stay on there until I've actually finished working the section. Nice sharp pencil. And round in the line. It's nice and clearly marked on now. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do in a minute is cut a check out through the length of it. So I'm going to mark that in now. We square. if it was a bigger stone I wouldn't be able to lift it around on the bank or I'd have to uh, lift it bank flat and I'd have to walk around it. It's on softer stones you use a marking drag as opposed to a scriber, because a scriber is um, the point of a scriber spreads from its point out quite quickly, and the deeper you mark your line in, the wider the line gets. But with a marking drag, it's the same width, so it doesn't matter how deep you put your line in, it stays the same yeah. thickness. So I'm going to drag these lines in now. <coughs> this is the line at the top of the cavetto. By dragging that line in, it gives me a good edge. And hopefully, <coughs> as long as I'm not too clumsy, end up with a good edge at the end of it. I'm 
normally I would walk around the other side of the stone and sort it from the other side, but because this stone's quite small, I can just turn it round on the bank. Down to the right depth on that side now. And turn the stone round, finish the cut this side. The idea of doing that is to make sure that when I start cutting, the saw is cutting down the waist side of the knife. Just short of the bottom, so I give it just a little tap and take that piece out. A little brush. Now that lump that's in the back there, most of you get that when you cut it, right? So I've purposely stopped cutting, so I've got a little lump in there, so I can show you how to deal with it when you get one. Most of you get that. 
really, if you were cutting properly, you would get right down to the bottom and you'd have a nice fillet in there and you wouldn't have a lump, right? But, I've, uh, left it for you. Alright, I'll see you boys. Right, if you've got a dummy I can borrow, I don't seem to have brought one over here. Right, can you all see? And the lump, right, is actually on that part there. So I'm just going to gently chop, chop down. end now, I've got my section marks on. I'm just dragging the end in so it's right down to the line. So it's nice and straight down the bottom there now. It's not quite straight in that bit. I haven't dragged that up yet. changing the direction of the drag quite frequently while I'm doing it. Don't keep going in the same direction all the time because you'll end up with big dips in the stone. Well that's straight now. And the next uh, bit to do is to drag the line in to the top of the cadetto there. allowing the straight edge to be the width of the drag away from the line so that when I drag the line in the edge of the drag lines right on where the section should be do a chamfer across there and a chamfer across there. So I mark them on. It's going across from the drag line just touching across line on for a chamfer I was going to do across it better like that but I'll just do it so you can see what I'm on about. You notice that I'm keeping the, the pencils quite sharp and I've got some fairly fine lines and I'm just touching across the top of the bit that I want to keep on there. So when we shan't for us through, that part will be just just right. <coughs> I'm going to 
take a bit of the waste off um, both chamfers and the pull tool and then I'll finish it off with an angle chisel. stone you're working or whatever you're working you always take it off in very small layers you don't go overboard and trying to get right down to where you need to be straight away because you'll end up with big lumps popping out of the stone I'll only work as far as I can comfortably without reaching over too far and then I'll either change position or go to the other end of the stone. When you get to the end of the bit where it's just the two ends are coming together you've got to be a little bit gentle with it because you'll always get a little lump popping out and if you try and take too much off it'll be below where you want it to be last layer that I'm going to do with the pool. Afterwards, I'll be going over it with a wooden handle chisel. Sometimes if you've got an edge you want to keep or you've got a face that's clean, you could be knocking your stone against your tools. So really, if you've got a really good clean job on your bank that you don't want to damage, you should keep all your tools on a shelf or away from what you're working. So you don't get any chips out of it. Well, I've um, I'm finished with a cool tool now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the end in. pencil line. Doing, 
go along for a few taps of the chisel, take a bit of the waste off, and then I'll come back and go just go over what I've done a little bit finer, taking the last little bit off, and then hopefully when I'm ready to drag it up, I won't have too much to drag off because it'll be down to the line where it needs to be. I stopped before I got too close to the end I turned round and started coming in the other way and so that the ends of the stone didn't get broken off The shape of the chisel then, does that help keep it straight open like that? When you say the shape of the chisel well, I would have thought like, looking at it and uh, you know, if I wasn't told so you'd use it the other way up but does that Slope there. When you're using wooden handled chisels, 99% of the time you would use them that way out. Yeah. Right. What's, what's, the, what's the reason? Like, does, it, does that help with anything or is it just shape? It just depends on what style chisel you've got. Some chisels you can buy that have been sharp on both sides. So you'd have to have it a lot lower to have it the other way because it would be cutting. In. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. yeah so do it stop going too deep? Um, so, does to a certain extent, yeah. Okay, so I've just finished tooling that along now. As you can see, it's uh, it's fairly straight already, yeah. But what I will do is drag it up just to get it right down to that line that I drew. Okay. Well, I'll stop filming now. 